One of the main focuses of modern astronomy is to essentially answer two questions about planet Earth. The first question is, what exact conditions were necessary to produce the planet that we live on today? And what conditions were then necessary to create life on the planet? With the other really important question being, can such planet exist somewhere out there in our galaxy or somewhere else in the universe? Or was the formation of planet Earth an extremely unlikely event, which by extension would make life itself quite a rarity as well? Well, we're not any closer to getting any of these answers, but in this video we're going to be discussing one discovery that presents us with a very intriguing star system that actually can take us a little bit closer to answering some of these questions. But I guess more importantly, potentially helping us discover something else really exciting. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to be discussing this relatively recent research that as always is available in the description below, where the scientists have once again discovered a very intriguing star system with quite a lot of similarity to the solar system, yet some very crucial differences. Once again highlighting the rarity of planet Earth. Although in this case, it's important to get a bit of a background. So basically, a brief summary of what the scientists have been discovering in the last decade or so. As you might already know from some of the previous videos, NASA has officially confirmed over 5,000 different exoplanets, with at least 9,000 more being what's known as candidates. But unlike previous predictions, so far the vast majority of planets discovered are somewhat different from anything we have in the solar system. There are quite a lot of gas giants discovered, but the majority of these gas giants are usually much warmer or sometimes extremely hot. There are also quite a lot of so-called super-Earths and mini-Neptunes discovered, and these planets don't even exist in the solar system. Yet they seem to be some of the most common planets in the rest of the galaxy. And terrestrial planets like planet Earth, Mars, Venus, and Mercury seem to be extremely rare, and the majority found so far have actually been around red dwarfs. So stars like Proxima Centauri, the closest star with the closest terrestrial exoplanet discovered to date. But most types of life from planet Earth would unlikely to survive around any of these stars. They're just too active, produce way too much radiation, but most importantly, do not even produce the right energy for things like photosynthesis. So existence of complex life in these star systems is still quite debatable even today. And if the life exists here at all, it would be extremely different to anything from planet Earth. Nevertheless, missions like the TESS telescope have mostly been looking at these particular planets around these types of stars. But more importantly, a lot of modern research definitively suggests that having various chemical reactions on the surface might not be enough for complex life. It's also really important to have just the right type of architecture in the star system, including the right type of neighboring planets, in order for all of this to create the dynamic conditions necessary for continuous survival of life. And so, for example, in the solar system, Jupiter is believed to play a super important role in both protecting the planet from various destructive colliders, so the ones that would most likely wipe out everything on the planet, but also helping deliver much smaller colliders, smaller asteroids and smaller comets that would seed the planet with various chemicals necessary for life. On top of this, the migration of earlier gas giants, such as Jupiter and Saturn, may have even been responsible for the actual formation of planet Earth from different, much larger planets. So possibly even planets like mini Neptunes, although this particular idea is still debatable even today. But the main point is that the actual architecture of the solar system is extremely important for everything that happens on Earth. Which is why some studies, instead of trying to focus on discovering terrestrial planets, actually try to focus on finding solar analogs, star systems with very similar planets to what we have in the solar system. And to be more specific, at least one gas giant similar to Jupiter, a star extremely similar to our own Sun, but also possibly some other planets in the vicinity. But preferably in very similar location in the star system itself. And completely by accident, we seem to have one such discovery, at least one very promising discovery. The recently confirmed planet around the star Hipparchos 104045, approximately 175 light years away from us, but, and this is extremely important, around a star that's very, very sun like, practically identical, only 3% more massive and 5% bigger than the sun itself, but with extremely similar age of 4.5 billion years old and very similar metallicity as well, so it's basically a solar twin. But this solar twin has a very exciting planet, two even. 
It seems to have a planet approximately double the mass of Saturn and a little bit less massive than Jupiter in around the same location where Jupiter is around the solar system, with an orbit of 6.3 years. A planet that, at least in theory, could have extremely similar effects to what Jupiter did in the solar system as well, basically guiding rocks around, redistributing materials, and protecting inner planets. But at the same time, there is a second planet here as well, in the location where we kind of expect Earth to be. Although unlike Earth, this is a very different world. It's something that's about three times as massive as Neptune and is most likely some kind of a smaller gas giant, with a total mass of about 43 Earths. In contrast, Neptune is about 17, but orbiting around the star every 317 days, or essentially in the area where in theory we may expect some kind of liquid water. With all of this discovered using HARPS, High Accuracy Radio Velocity Planet Searcher, that's been active for approximately nine years. And unlike other telescopes, HARPS essentially looks for planets by using radial velocity, by looking at minute variations, periodic variations, in the starlight itself. And so as the planet, massive planet, orbits around the star, it will usually produce redshift and blueshift effects. And in this case, two such effects were discovered, indicating two relatively big planets. But this is a really exciting program known as the Solar Twin Planet Search, whose main purpose is to only look for planets around sun-like stars. And so far this is one of the most exciting discoveries. But even though the planet in the habitable zone is just a little bit too massive to be terrestrial and very likely does not actually have oceans on the surface, there is something else that can happen here. These massive planets will often contain moons, and in this case, a moon around this planet does have a very high chance to have liquid ocean. In other words, at the moment, this is probably one of the most exciting candidates for a potential discovery of an actual habitable moon. And if these moons are anything similar to what we have in the solar system, they're most likely going to have liquid oceans. Although assuming that these moons also follow a similar pattern to what we have in the solar system, they're most likely not going to be very big, much smaller than our own moon, and maybe something similar to Enceladus, one of the moons of Saturn. But as you might already know, this moon is essentially all liquid water, a huge ice structure on the surface and a huge ocean underneath, making this a pretty exciting discovery, at least for now. The problem is, of course, actually confirming this or even seeing this. The way that this was discovered is without looking at the planets passing in front of a star. Radial velocity does not actually require that. And so since we're not going to be able to see the transit of these planets in front of a star, identifying moons or studying their atmosphere, discovering the oceans here, or anything else, would right now be extremely difficult. Almost impossible. Mostly because the technology is still not there. Nevertheless, at least for now, this is a really exciting discovery of two very interesting planets around an extremely intriguing star. And so we'll probably come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos once the scientists find something else. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful Persian t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.